Tina. I'm Ross. And today we have another unboxing brought to you by our kind viewer, Richard. Thank you so much, Richard. Yes. He has sent us another four boxes. He mentioned that these were coming. And so we're going to start with the two smallest ones. Maybe we'll do a third one depending on how long this takes. Okay. And we'll save. He has a big heavy one that we'll save for another time. And, and he let us know that there's some things in here we may want to go ahead and eat right away and other things to put in the fridge. So we'll get unboxing and we'll probably want to have a cup of tea ready. Sounds good. So. All right. Which one? Hmm? Which one? <laughs> which one would you like to start with? Doesn't matter to me. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. So it's SRBX. SR box. SR box. Viola. How's that work? All right. Let's see what's on top here. Elizabeth Bachman's Landlord Fruitcake. So that's something Landlord. new for us. Landlord Fruitcake. Choice vine fruits steeped in Timothy Taylor's Landlord Pale Ale are combined with ground almonds and subtle spices. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds interesting. It's very moist. It does, yeah. Something small. Fiber One. Like a little snack bar. Strawberry cheesecake flavor. Love cheesecake. Thank you, Richard. We're gonna have that age where we need our fiber. <laughs> so true. <laughs> at that age where we need our fiber. Oh. Cheese and ham toasties. Mm. Are they crisps? Director's cup. Yeah, they, that's. Like, Looks like it. Looks like there's crisps with, uh, or more cheese and ham flavor for the maximum toasty taste. Maybe it's um, kind of like with those bagel chips instead of potato chips. Maybe it's. Yeah, I can't tell. Can't tell from the package. We won't know until we try them. Baked, not fried. Oh. Love ham and cheese combination. Sounds good. <laughs> All right. And here is Elizabeth Bothman's plum bread. I think this is the one he was saying we could eat right away and recommended putting other cakes in the fridge because they're a little on the sticky side. I know we experienced that with some of the other cakes that he had sent us before. But they are pretty sticky, so. That's good. Yeah. That's very good. I think I can get half here. Dayton Walnut Spelt Brack. Brack? Yeah, I don't think it's... I was trying to figure out, it's like, did you say bread? No, you said Brack, because that's what it says. <laughs> yeah, this one does feel a little bit um, sticky, too. Bothams of Whitby. All right. Yeah. Rich and nutty fruit loaf. Has sultanas in it. Mm. Yeah. Sounds good. So Brack is a, is a fruit cake made without adding shortening. Okay. So there you go. In Yorkshire, it's a treat with a bit of butter and cheese. Okay. All right. You look for any excuses to have cheese. <laughs> and this one is Elizabeth Bothman's Whitby Heritage Ginger Loaf. No, we, we had ginger loaf once. Was it ginger? We had some kind of ginger something. Ginger cake? Ginger loaf? Sticky something. Block gingerbread. Sounds interesting. Yeah. Both love ginger? Yeah. Is that the same brand as... Um, yeah, a lot of these are this Elizabeth Bachman, it looks like. Like the Dayton Walnut. Established in 1865. And I've got the plum one over here, but that's the one he was saying that we could right. probably eat without having to refrigerate it. So. Cool. Nice. Okay. 
putting that aside as a taster. Okay. <laughs> you got have one here too. Yep. I see familiar packaging. Yorkshire. I said Yorkshire. I'm sorry. Yorkshire. <laughs> Yorkshire Brack. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay, so Yorkshire Brack. Sticky fruit loaf. As, as with um, the Dayton Walnut. Spelt Brock. Or is it Brock? Pronounced Brock. Brock. Good question. Uh, in Yorkshire, it's a treat with a little bit of butter and cheese. Mm-hmm. Okay. Mm. Just do a close up. <laughs> and I did not do this before. My bad. Okay. Hey, lady. All right. Oh, I just saw something. And we have the McCoys, the real McCoys Fire Pit Flame Smoked Chorizo. It's a little packet of crisps. Sounds good. I'm glad you're sitting down for this. Oh, I, th- I think I just spotted it. Yeah. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> Jaffa Cakes! Raspberry! Remember we were saying that would be a good flavor for them to have. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, thank you. Thank you very much. And we, we got raspberry ones. They weren't the McVitie's, though. They were... Some other brand. It were... might have even been the Polish brand. I don't know. Yep, but they were good. Looks like we have a little a little bag from the cheese board of Harrogate. I know Richard was planning to send us a really lovely assortment of cheese. Really checked into it, thought we were going to be able to receive it okay, send it with some cold packs. And I know he had issues on on his end with sending it uh, as far as who would who would actually send cheese. So yeah, Richard a, has a lot of cheese <laughs> to eat now, but we definitely appreciate it because, yeah, when I'm thinking of that cheese, then I'm wondering, I wonder if it's like the Wensleydale cheese, like the Plains Wensleydale, would you have it with that, which is something we can't find here. We, in fact, I did see the Wensleydale today when we were in um, Cosmos. Grocery Outlet, right. but it was the kind with that had the apricot in it. Okay. So we keep seeing the ones with the fruit in it. We have never seen plain Wensleydale, but we will keep looking because you never know what's going to show up. But yeah, that would have been so much fun to try the different cheeses because I know he was going to, planning to send us some plain Wensleydale. Yeah, it just didn't work out. And yeah. I'm assuming that would be the same type of cheese you would have with these loaves. That's what I was wondering. Yeah. All right, I think we've got this one taken care of. Uh, these all look good. These all look very good. Nice. <laughs> Yeah, I think it was one of the Polish brands, maybe that. Yeah, we had a. They were some. They were similar to Jaffa cakes, and they had raspberry cherry flavor. Raspberry cherry. Um, I think they even had a black currant. Black currant. Which yeah. we never see. Yeah, it's very elusive. Here we have. Next box. Okay, are you ready? I'm ready. Second box, and behold. Uh, let's see. Oh. I see foxes. foxes. Did you want to go first? We've got, first up, Fox's Fabulous Indulgent Center Cookies. Chocolate orange. Looks like they have a nice little center in that. That reminds me of some we found at Cospos World Market, was it? By Cadbury? I'm trying to remember. It was something that you could you could heat up and it had some chocolate in the center. The melts. Well, yeah. Wasn't there also like a... I think maybe that was the, the Cadbury melts. Here. Yeah, I, I think I remember... Wasn't one of these things where you tried it, but you was like, yeah, this is good, but I don't know if I'd pick it up again. Yeah, that's kind of how I felt about them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. For, you know, of course, coming here, they're, they're fairly expensive. And, yeah. you know, we're going to pay for something expensive. We're going to have it on something we absolutely love. Can't get anything else similar like it. You know, Jaffa Cakes would probably be one of those things. And I remember the first time trying Foxes, I think we were at Touch of Britain and they offered us those chocolate orange cookies. The sandwich cookies. The sandwich yeah. biscuits and they were, oh, they were so good. All right. Okay. What's so, up next? <laughs> I, I see apple crumble and immediately gets my attention. Oh, speaking of, yeah, those are the, the sandwich style biscuits that we had before. Yeah. Foxes. Except, hmm? 
Yeah, you just I was just looking at the flavor, the apple crumble. This is that. Oh, oh limited I was gonna say, is it new? Limited edition. I was gonna say it's perfect for fall time to have that apple flavor. It's Fox's favorite. Crunch and creams. Apple cr apple crumble. As Tina pointed out, limited edition. Tina's two favorite <laughs> words. Okay. Apple crumble. Should we, that sounds it? Yeah. All right, I'm going to pull out something that looks a little savory here. This is from Waitrose. Ooh. Christmas Festive Spice Bacon Flavor Crisps. Mm, that, that sounds good. That sounds really good. You know, we've had a few other, a few other bacon crisps, and they've all been wonderful. They've been top-notch. Yeah. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Here's something I, I don't recall ever seen before. I don't think you've seen it either. Surely. Biscuit. Original. You know the name sounds familiar? Like somebody mentioned Shirley. Yeah. But we weren't familiar with it at all? Yeah. I, I'm not, I haven't seen it before. Oh, it says Wibisco. First, I thought it said Nabisco, which is a brand that we see here. Yeah, don't have my glasses on. I was thinking maybe it's Nabisco also. Yeah, it says Wibisco. So huh. I, I wonder if this is something you have with tea, like a dunking biscuit. Possibly, because it's like little plain biscuits. I'm, I'm wondering again, would this be similar to what we have here called ammo crackers? That's kind yeah. of what they, I would expect, but you never know. Okay. Yeah. My, my bad eyes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right, That's next right. up, we have some more crunch creams. These are very vanilla. New, really crunchy. Cool. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I think you should grab that one. <laughs> Why, Tina? Why? Because it's got you written all over it. We have here Ferrero. Raffaello. Raffaello. By Ferrero. Uh, coconut <laughs> and almond. Looks like a looks like a white chocolate. And Richard, thank you. You know how I feel about coconut. Sorry, dear. <laughs> I I don't think I've ever had this. I mean we, we see uh, Ferrero products here, but mm -hmm. I don't recall ever seeing this and in fact, I'm looking on the back. It's, I know he sent us some of those with the hazelnut thing we still need to try. Yes, those are the ones yeah. in question. And new. Another new product. It's nice that we have a limited edition new. Mm hmm. There's something else that says new. More indulgent center cookies. These are triple chocolate. Chocolate orange and triple chocolate. Mm. Sounds good. And we have Honester.com, the home of adventure, Lake District. Gotta go sure. Honester Slate Mine. Hmm. You get to go in the mine. Ooh, this looks a little scary. Oh, he <laughs> He was telling us about doing these Via Ferrata things, and we were like, mm, I don't think so. Neither one of us likes ice. <laughs> we're just kind of attached to a cable there, and yeah, mm -hmm. adrenaline passes, the bungee jumping looks like. Infinity Bridge, <laughs> yeah, that looks, well, I don't know, climb in the mine. Mm. Well, maybe a mind tour. Maybe a mind tour. That might be more our speed. Yeah. <laughs> Something where we're not dangling. Yeah. Uh, dangling from uh, high up. Yeah. Some of these other people, they're, they're a braver soul than me. Yeah. And, um, Oops. And go to the Bait Cabin Cafe. That's yeah. I was just looking at that. <laughs> Ingo's last working slate mine. All right. Yeah, we could check out the slate gallery shop and the uh... <laughs> go on the mine tour, and that's about it—the one where they have the little kid on there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Little, little safe kid, that's our speed. Yeah. Put our hard hats on. Yeah. Then go to the Slade Gallery Shop and the big Cabin Cafe. Richard, I'm, I'm just curious. I believe you said you did the uh, Via Ferrata events. Was it actually at this, this location? And Richard, you're braver than me. <laughs> yeah, not great with heights. <laughs> Mind tour. We can do the mind tour. Yeah. Looks fun though. All right. So, did you want to put the kettle on our kettle on our gas stove, which is sort of the old fashioned kettles? We don't have an electric kettle. <laughs> you know, on the hob? <laughs> sure. All right. And then we'll have some of this plum bread. That's good. All right. We're back with our plum bread. We sliced off and put a little butter on it. And also, we're going to be trying some tea that Richard sent us in a previous box. This is Tea India Nilgiri, which I have not tried before. It's new to me. It says deliciously dark and aromatic. And it says some nice things about this Action Village India. It says, a part of our long-term commitment to the communities where we source our tea, we now collaborate with Action Village India. This charity supports Indian partner organizations who work alongside villagers in some of the most remote parts of rural India to improve lives, livelihood, and resilience. We are working with Action Village India to support an education program which enables 500 girls per year to continue their secondary education. This will give them a greater chance of escaping poverty, leading healthier and more productive lives, and raising the standard of living for children, families, and communities. Yes. So that was kind of a long one to get through. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, new to us says authentically Indian. All right. It smells good. Deliciously dark and aromatic, Nilgiri is grown high in the Nilgiri Hills in the most southern part of India. All right. Okay. We've never had it before. No. Yeah, this looks wonderful. We're gonna try first. Tea. I don't know if the tea's gonna be too hot. It's a perfect day for tea too. It just started raining here not that long ago. It finally feels like fall. <laughs> so, give it a try. Hopefully, we won't burn our tongues. I think it's a little too hot for me. What if I try my after the? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just got a little sip. Very nice. I was thinking it's gonna be like really strong the way it said, uh, deliciously dark and aromatic, but. And this is not a okay. And this is not a brand we we see here at all. Not that I've noticed. Granted, I don't go through the tea aisle all that much. Okay. I feel like some places like we really don't go to Whole Foods that much, but sometimes they have some different brands that we may not normally see in our other supermarkets. Or Cost Plus as well. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this in Cost Plus that I recall. Okay. All right. Are you ready? ready? Yep. <laughs> Mm. It has a lot of fruit in it. Mm -hmm. Very chewy. Mm -hmm. Dense, moist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So well, taste homemade. It says Sultana's currants. The vine fruits, mixed peel, orange peel, lemon peel. Though what I'm looking for is I thought I would see plums as an ingredient. <laughs> I'm not seeing it unless I'm looking over it. I don't know, do you see plums in it? <laughs> vine fruits. Vine and fruits, 41%. Uh, sultanas, currants, sunflower oil. Which we see sultanas and currants in a lot of a lot of baked goods we've gotten from the UK. Okay. I have not seen plums. <laughs> but We expected plums, but... I don't mind. <laughs> I really like the taste of this. Uh, it's moist, dense, sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, goes nicely. You put some butter on top. Tastes like it's something homemade. Like I was wondering, like when you were a kid, growing up, 
um, did your mother bake like breads, like zucchini bread, um, sweet breads, like cinnamon bread? Not very often. My mother did, and um, I was never a fan of like zucchini bread. Yeah, that, I know, I'm not a fan of zucchini to begin with, so putting in a bread, I don't know if that'll help it much. Banana bread, not so much. Mm -hmm. if, if I had something like this, if, if my mom made something like this, I've been all over it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is just uh, really I just had this. some pumpkin bread recently, too, that was really good. Mm -hmm. I think you had some, too. That was tasty. To me, the pumpkin bread was more like a cake. It was so yeah. sweet and moist. Cinnamon, lots of those good fall spices. Yeah, when I'm looking yeah. at the picture on here, it looks like grapes, so definitely the vine fruits. So that was interesting that it was called a plum bread. So where does that name come from? If anybody knows, let us know. Because in my mind, I was just expecting, oh, it must have plums in it. It's a, it's mm. a plum bread. It's not something we, we really see here. Mm -hmm. I mean, like I was just saying. Oh, zucchini bread, banana bread. We don't see plum breads. I've never seen like in a store plum mm -hmm. bread, but yeah, I really like this. this. What do you think? Mm -hmm. We had something before. It was described as what squeegee. Hmm. You know what I'm talking about. When I was cutting this, it was reminding me of it. Yeah. Why am I going blank now? You put it in the toaster. It'd be nice and toasty on the outside. It was. Moist. Yeah, and everybody was saying you don't put it in the toaster. <laughs> but the packaging was saying, <laughs> and it was good. Yeah, it was very good. Mm -hmm. And the packaging, Sorine. So, yes, was, thank you. Yeah, that was what we we're trying to remember. Because when I was cutting off that, this reminds me a bit of Sorine. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Even the packaging suggested toasted. And yeah, there's just something about that. So now I know you want to toast your next one. <laughs> I do. I will. We'll probably get a lot of comments. <laughs> You're not supposed to toast it. But... You know what? But now we're curious to give it a try because we thought the Sorine was really good toasted with yeah. a little butter on it. That was that was our favorite way because we did try it multiple ways based on viewer comments and, and that was our favorite. Mm -hmm. Because it was nice because it wasn't hard like a hard piece of toast where it's really crunchy. It was just a you know toasty, slightly crunchy on the outside, but still really moist. That was great. Yeah, but the combination and uh, a lot of flavor to it. I, I like the, moist, mm -hmm. the moistness of this and the, the fruit. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Richard, thank you. Did you get your tea yet? No, I was just about to ask you. You tried the tea first, then you tried your bread. Mm-hmm. You think they, they both go well together? I think so. Yeah. Mm, that's good. Mm-hmm. like that. What would you compare this to? I'm not sure. It, I mean, it reminds me a lot of just a black tea, but I think, let's see mm. the ingredients, it just says it's, oh, it's 100% Nilgiri black tea. Okay. So it's just, um, I guess just maybe where it's grown, because it's grown in the Nilgiri Hills. You know, definitely where you grow things can impact the taste. And I, I'm not enough of a tea connoisseur to tell, but that's what I was saying. That reminds me of a black tea and it's got good flavor. Yeah, I like it. If and I'm, maybe, I'm assuming maybe stronger too, because it says deliciously dark. And um, I do like stronger teas. I don't like them too weak. And that's something we have seen in Cost Plus World Market is the Builder's Tea, which I understand is a stronger tea. Yeah. But we haven't tried that yet. It's not today, in <laughs> fact, earlier this morning. Yeah. So we're back and we decided, well, we may want more than just the one little piece of, of plum bread, but not too much. So we were eyeing the Shirley. And thought that might just be a nice little thing to finish off our cup of tea. Yeah. I'll just say that. That, that plum bread, that was good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it takes me back to like when I was a kid, my mom made raisin bread, cinnamon <laughs> bread, zucchini bread. And it was not, no offense, Mom, nowhere near as moist <laughs> as that plum bread. Okay, so I'm opening this up. This is again Shirley. Kind of look like, uh, this kind of remind me of those malt biscuits. Do they kind of look like the malt biscuits? They do, and they have a little house on them. Well, where are these from? Because I almost, when I was thinking about it, it almost reminded me like I heard of these from Australia. Made really? in Barbados, oh. distributed in Jamaica. Hmm. 
Never heard of them. Wrong part of the world, I guess. Richard, do you pick these up? Like a dunking biscuit? Good question. Are you going to dunk? I am. (laughs) What do you think? A very mild biscuit. Are you having animal cracker flashbacks? A little bit, yeah. How about you? Yeah. They're definitely better dunked. I just had one undunked. Helps soften them up a bit. Yeah, I'm, I'm having the animal cracker, <laughs> uh, graham cracker flashbacks. They, they kind of remind me more of the uh, animal crackers. More animal crackers, yeah. Mm-hmm. Because they're usually kind of crunchy. Real mild flavored. Yeah. Made for kids. <laughs> like us. Mm. But yeah, the little animal crackers, they come in the different animal shapes. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I, I could see that easily being something you'd have with coffee, tea. Mm-hmm. And the serving size is like four biscuits that you actually sit there and don't try a few in your tea. Especially if you're like wanting something in the afternoon. Maybe just something to hold you over until dinner time. That would be perfect. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, would you put butter on it? No. No. Okay. <laughs> I'm expecting one person to at least comment. Mm. Just supposed to put butter on it. Never seen him before? Locked him? Richard, thank you. All right, thanks again, Richard, for um, providing all these goodies for us. And now we got to try the plum bread and a new kind of tea. So definitely more tastings coming up and more unboxings because we didn't get to the other two yet. Yes, both were top notch. Thank you very much. Thank you. And let us know in the comments if you spotted anything, if you have any suggestions for us, or you spotted something that you really love, let us know. So if you like food reactions and food tastings, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Also be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you know we publish a new video. And until next time, bye-bye. Bye.